Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. A new academic year is almost here, at least for me, and an important part of starting a new academic year is to plan for the semester that is ahead. Today I will be showing you some of the planning techniques that I use when I prepare, and I hope you will find them useful too. The first thing I want to talk about is how to structure your week. Having a weekly schedule is for me crucial when it comes to managing my time, and it also takes away a lot of stress when you know what you will be doing and when you will be able to get things done. A weekly plan can be made in many ways. I prefer using Google Calendar as it's a free software that I can use on both my computer, my iPad and my phone, but some people prefer using a physical planner or just writing their schedule on their phone or a piece of paper. The most important thing is finding the way that works the best for you. The method I use for structuring my week is called time blocking, which means that I divide my days into blocks, where each block signifies a certain event or activity. There are several methods of doing this, one being that you time block your whole day, and another being that you time block only the working hours of your day. I personally prefer the second method as it gives me a few unplanned hours every day where I can choose if I want to keep working or just take a break depending on how I feel. When using time blocking there are a few tips that I find helpful. The first one is to allocate a bit more time for each activity than you actually need. For example, if a lecture lasts for an hour and 45 minutes, I will give it two hours. That way you have time to shift your focus between tasks and events, and you're still in control even if an event lasts a bit longer than expected. The next tip is to prioritize when you plan your time blocking. I always start with events that already have a set time, such as lectures, seminars, work, and so on. Then my second main priority will be study sessions and preparation for work. When you want to plan these activities is up to you, but here it's important to consider when your most productive time of the day is. That is when I want to have time to do these activities, as they are the ones that require the most focus from me. It is also incredibly important to allocate time for activities that aren't necessarily productive. I know for a fact that I can't go through my workday without breaks, so for me it's important to set aside time during my working hours for breaks, meals, some light exercise, and so on. Then finally, it is important to include some buffer time in your weekly plan. So I always have a few hours each week where I plan to be working, but don't have a specific activity in mind. You might not be able to accomplish everything you expected to within a certain frame of time, and then it is very good to know that you already have set aside time later in the week to catch up on those tasks. Next, I want to talk a bit about planning your studies, because while it is important to plan how you want your week to look like, it is also important to plan how and what you're going to study during your working hours. I usually make two study plans, one semesterly plan and a more detailed weekly plan each week. I make my semester plan as soon as the syllabus has been posted, which for me is usually a couple of weeks before classes start. I make my semester plans using a table in Microsoft Word and I use a physical planner for my weekly plans. I make one plan for each class and there are a few things that I consider when making these plans. For my semester plan, I want it to be as close to the syllabus as possible. So if there are suggested chapters for each week, then I will focus on those chapters. So while it is tempting to make a very ambitious plan to finish everything weeks ahead of schedule, I personally prefer to follow the recommended pace so that I can make the best use out of the weekly lectures and contact hours. My semester plan will also be based heavily around important assignments and of course the final exam. So while I follow the syllabus when it comes to learning new material, I will also plan a bit ahead for my assignments, 
so that I don't have to do everything the last few days before it's due and I also have some extra time in case things take longer time than expected. Finally, when making my semester plan, I find it useful to plan out time every week to do a bit of preparation for upcoming topics and also some time to revise past topics. So some things I do is to plan time to skim through next week's topics and read over my notes for the past couple of weeks. This should not take long, but it is very helpful when it comes to retaining the material you study. When it comes to making a weekly study plan, my first tip is to base it around lectures and other contact hours. For example, I plan to do readings and preparations before lectures, work on assignments during and after exercise classes, and do a weekly review when all contact hours are done. It's useful to space out your study sessions for a certain class throughout the week, not just work on one class per day. This also helps me personally maintain my focus while studying, as I'm working on multiple topics every day and not just the same thing for many hours at a time. Next, it is important to understand that a weekly study plan needs to be flexible. Which study techniques work for you for a certain class will probably change during the semester, and that is completely fine. You should not spend time focusing on a study technique that don't really give you value. So from time to time, it is useful to reflect on your study techniques and change them up from week to week, depending on how you feel you work the best. My final tip for weekly study plans is to use your buffer time wisely. You don't necessarily spend the same amount of time on a specific class each week, and therefore it is important to have time planned every week that you haven't allocated to a specific class. No two weeks look exactly the same, so it is wise to spend your buffer time on what's currently the most urgent. And if some weeks are more quiet than others, then there's absolutely no shame in using your buffer hours for some well-deserved time off. Next, a small tip that helps me a lot with planning is to set aside a few minutes to plan every evening. While your weekly schedule and your study schedule gives you an overview of important events and things to get done, it is also useful to take a few minutes every evening to plan for the day ahead, just writing down specific tasks that need to be accomplished the following day. Personally, I set aside 5-10 to 10 minutes at the end of my working hours and I feel like it really helps me shift my focus after a long day of work, as I know that I have planned out when I will get my remaining tasks done. Finally, one last important thing is to remember that not all days go according to plan, and that's okay. A plan should only be an outline of how you want your day to look like, not a strict schedule that you need to follow completely. If you schedule absolutely every minute of your day, then for me at least, chances are I will find myself behind schedule more often than I would like, and I would be constantly stressing trying to catch up. The main reason for planning should be to eliminate stress, not create more of it. So that is it for this video. I hope you found some of these tips useful, and I wish you the best of luck with a new academic year if you're also starting soon. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon with another video.